Okay, so um, we're recording, just so as you know, because we put this up afterwards for everybody to get hold of. So um, it, it saves people scribbling. And some people actually, when they do register, tell us that they're not going to be on the live. They're just going to go and watch the recording. Um, so I'm going to attempt to share my screen with you. Um, whenever this thing will play, but I might have to restart that particular program because it seems that it doesn't want to play at all. Um, so I'm going to go through, um, I've got like a, just a couple of, oh, hello. Hello, Kelly. <laughs> Uh, I've just got a couple of slides to show you, which I'll then turn into a PDF so you can have that as well. Um, and then we'll go and have a look at some some actual forms and get some ideas and bits and pieces going. So hopefully that will help everybody. So I've got to try and work out... Um, which screen it will actually let me share. So hopefully you can see one now. Yeah. And can you see the, the slideshow or can you just see where my mouse is moving? I can see your mouse moving and also it says WordPress Academy. Right, okay. So it's for some bizarre reason, this is, this is the problem we had last time, is it projects the um, <laughs> it projects the screen onto the wrong one instead of playing it on the <coughs> live one it, it projects it onto the other one right I'm going to stop sharing and get it onto the right screen it's determined not to play so let's try that again hopefully now you can see my mouse moving there yeah Oh, so there's not many here, and now hopefully you can see the screen, the, the slides. There's not, there's not many, so I just want to, um, James, you've just mentioned about contact forms, which are, um, most websites should have them. People should be able to contact you, because even if it's just a complaint, and especially if you're a business, because it also gives them that feeling of, of your being real, so to speak. So there's a phone number, there's an address, um, and Richard... Richard and James, that's one for you in this country. Um, it's a legal requirement as either, um, if, you, if either you're self-employed or you're a business, you must have a trading address on the website. Okay, so it could be it's your, your accountant if you have that agreement with them, or it could be that you have um, a virtual office somewhere where all your posts and stuff goes, but it needs to be on there. Um, but sometimes we want more than that. So we want to collect far more information. I mean, we do, especially um, if people want us to look at websites for them or whatever, we need to know more than just their name and their email address. So that's what we're going to sort of go and look at. Um, I don't know who came up with that title. That wasn't me. So the first rule that you should think about before you even pick on the tool to deliver as from my point of view, is that you only want to ask people for the minimum amount of information that you need to get the job done, okay? Because otherwise people won't fill in the forms. It's that simple. So the more questions you ask them, the less likely they are to fill it in. So um, you can either keep the form short. So we, we were talking earlier about people signing up for newsletters. So if you've ever signed up for a newsletter with somebody, normally all they want is your, your first name and your email address because that's all they need to talk to you. Yeah? People aren't going to give um, first name, surname, email address, business type just to get your newsletter. Okay, so consider that when you start your, your planning process, what do you need? So um, it may be that if you need to have a telephone conversation with them, okay, you're going to add in some more forms, parts of the form. So you want the telephone number, obviously, because you're going to ring them. This means you're going to initiate the conversation. And the other thing is, what's a good time to call them? Yeah, so you can either 
create a form to do that or there's various other tools that you could possibly use to do it but it's just part of your planning process what do i need what to make this sale and and essentially that it is a sale even if it's to give somebody a proposal it is a sale of sorts okay um so the other way we can do that is with conditional logic and um conditional logic you may or may not have come across them yourselves where you'll see maybe a form with say 10 questions on it but if you say yes to question one it goes straight to question five so i don't know if you've come across those yeah yeah okay so um yeah as i said for the newsletter sign up <coughs> what do you need um yeah so we actually have forms with several pages on and if somebody answers on one of them uh, question five for example or question three as i've put there they say yes then it will take them to page three we don't need them to fill out page two okay so straight away it's going to take them on and we'll get the process finished with the minimum amount of fuss for them but ensuring that we've got what we need to complete the next stage of the process um so some of the things you might think of these four um, support requests if you actually do run things like that so uh, Richard you may want to on your uh, site for example your sales so there may be a support afterwards for somebody who buys something how do I mix this with that or whatever they can put in a support request so you may have a specific form just for that um, as I said we use it for project information gathering so if you want us to do something for you where are we going to do it what is it you want done have you got any images so load images up and give them to us so we can collect everything off the form without actually needing to have a face-to-face -face and you give me a memory stick etc to, to complete it okay so that's just to give you an idea of what you can use them for um i'm trying to think of something kelly that would actually make sense to you um I suppose if somebody wanted some information about the area or something. Yeah, or we do have memberships as well. Yeah, there you go. Um, memberships is a, is a slightly different um, thing there. People, if they want to be a part of something, are, are far more likely to divulge information from that point of view because they know they're going to get something in return. Um, a lot of what we're talking about is so James say if your wife has to do a consultation prior to actually getting people in to do a procedure especially now with the, you know her time is precious in the in the is it called a studio or whatever um, then it may be that she needs to ask health questions and things in the questionnaire to keep the time short of somebody actually being in having treatment so if you if you've got the medical uh, things sorted out up front so have you got skin allergies or i don't know whatever um then you know they've signed that declaration up front it could save time in the in the, the afterwards because the consultation doesn't need to happen from that point of view yeah okay yeah that sounds good um so if i get that out of the way i said it wasn't much it was just a that was more notes for me actually to be honest okay so I'm going to talk through a couple of tools that we use um, and some of them may come as a surprise because they're not actually in fact hold on, I just thought I didn't think that had finished no it hasn't oh, so yeah, I'm just fooling myself okay like I said there's a couple of things we were going to look at um, gravity forms is a big player in as a WordPress plugin okay so um, James and Kelly are you sort of averse with how WordPress is made up so to speak so all right let me let me give you a quick analogy so um, WordPress your WordPress website is a bit like a frame it's a bit like a frame tent so the WordPress core files make the frame and then you have what they call a theme which is like the canvas that you stretch over the top and then you have plugins which give you added functionality so it, it may be that you wanted to have a door in one side so you would put in a plugin that would simply create the door for you to go in and out on that one side so I ho hopefully that will make things a little bit easier when we go through here so as I say gravity forms is a plugin um, it's not the only one and there are other ones that will do some of the bits and pieces that I'm going to show you so 
um, like the the, uh, the BBC, there are other versions available. Um, Engage Bay, which is a a CRM, to be honest, it's it, it's far more than so. It is another tool that would run alongside your WordPress website, and Airtable, which is again a third party um, piece of equipment for want of a better description. And I'll quickly show you through them. Essentially, it's a, a bit of a spreadsheet, but with a database and other bits mm. involved. So it is quite uh, an in-depth tool. Uh, so yeah, so Engage Bay, as I said, is, has anybody heard of HubSpot? Mm -hmm. Well, um, Engage Bay, if I remember rightly, was created by the same people that created HubSpot. So it's a, a sales and marketing tool. It's a, a client relationship manager, as they call it. Um, and I can't remember what the costings of it are. Um, I'll, I'll make sure that we put that up into the academy for people. Um, but they're, they're, they have a free level, like so many of these things. They, ha they have a freemium and you can build from that. Um, so you can actually create the lists and funnels. So because it's a marketing sales tool, you can create the funnels and things. You can add tags. Um, so you could say this person came from the website um, and via Facebook, you can put all those sort of tags in. So you can create that first um, and then create the form from what you've got there. Um, and obviously the, one of the advantages there is if somebody ticks a box on the form that says I'm a hairdresser and I'm in Kent, you can then send an email out to everybody that has said they are a hairdresser from Kent. Okay, so no matter how many people have come in, you can just say, I just want to email those people. Okay, so that's um, from, from that point of view, Engage Bay, really quite useful because you've put them straight into your CRM from there. Um, Airtable, as I said, is um, a, essentially a spreadsheet and a database. So it does a lot of what Excel do. It does more in some respects and less in others. Okay, so for example, you cannot do sums inside a cell. Okay, there is a way around it, but it, it, it doesn't do it quite like that. Uh, and that's another one that, if I remember rightly, has a, a freemium. So you can sign up for free for limited uh, accessibility, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, you, you build it as a, as a table and I'll show you, it's a bit like Excel, we'll have a quick run through. And then you, again, you take what you've built and turn it into a form. Okay. And essentially when your data comes back, when somebody fills it in, you access it through Airtable. Okay. So like, like a spreadsheet, it fills it into the columns. Each question that they answer, it fills the data into the columns as you've created it. So is everybody happy with that so far? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gravity Forms, I've just mentioned before. Um, obviously, this is their bit that says the most trusted tool. Um, we do like it, I'll, I will grant you. And, um, and one of the, the bonuses from our point of view is that you can actually put um, payment options in there. So you can actually sell using this form and I think that Stuart just come back because I think we lost him so bear with me a second oh where's he gone nope where's that ah oh, here we go it's so com complicated using three screens at times I tell you I don't know why I bother <laughs> So yes, uh, yeah. So it's a, a drag and drop form builder. So you actually you build it in your WordPress dashboard. James, have you had to switch to a different technology or something? I have. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Not a problem at all. Um, so from the top of my head, they all have conditional logic facilities in them. Okay, um, Gravity Forms. Uh, allows you to do confirmation so you can send emails to yourselves or your team and to them 
to the person who fills it in. And uh, so, sorry, confirmation is the stuff to them, notification is the stuff to you. And like I said, I'll, uh, I'll turn that into something later on. Now I need to find. Okay, okay. so hopefully now you can all see um, the Women in Business radio show, Big Pair of Lips. Yes? No, you've got screen one at the moment. Okay, is that all you can see, just screen one? Uh, screen one and you've got your face, which has been broken. Okay, we've had, a proper, there. we've had a proper meltdown, right. Don't you just love technology? Right, let's try that again. So hopefully now, yeah, you can see that okay, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so this is Airtable. The, the first, this first one I'm going to show you. So essentially, um, as I said, it is a bunch of columns and rows that you can create. So you can create the columns here. Um, you can customize your field types. So you can have uh, URLs, you can put in fields for phone numbers and emails, etc, etc. And you literally just build them across the page as you go. And then you can switch to your form view, which if you look on the side here, you'll see these fields are the same fields as were on the sheet as a spreadsheet. Okay, so it's just turned them all into different parts on the form. And we can, like so many of these things, we can reorder these. So it's drag and drop from that point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and they all work in slightly different ways, as I said. So, for example, um, consent to contact. We put this on everything from a, a, a GDPR point of view. I don't know, Kelly, if that actually affects you, but you, you probably need to be aware of your state laws or whatever regarding that. Um, because GDPR is a European Union thing. So I'm not sure if 100% if that would impact you in that fashion. Uh, you may just need a tick box that says I accept your privacy policy or something like that. And we have, I have implicit or I have explicit permission. Okay. So implied they emailed us so we can grab that email. Explicit is please add me to your list. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, whereas what we tend to do is say that this form is for this purpose and that is the only thing we are going to use this information for. Are you happy with that? Essentially. Um, so it means if I give you my information for a newsletter, you're, you can send me the newsletter, but you can't then send me something like a sales to a sales page, a link to a sales page, because that's not what I signed up for. Uh, and we need to be wary of that. <clears throat> um, so I don't know if you can see that because it's not a particularly good screen, but it does highlight if you put your mouse over it and then you can click on it. Okay, and you can then see that you've got a few more bits and pieces that you can utilize to actually make the, the form work. Uh, we talked about conditional logic. So if I show you this form where it's embedded on the website, um, you can see that it's taking this, this field is required there. And then it says, um, are you an agent applying on behalf of your client? So if I actually go back to the form and it says there, you'll see underneath this one says, little information thing says it's a conditional field, okay? So what we've said is, if you are an agent and the answer is yes, then they get to see that field, okay? So if I show you the form, at the moment it's tick no and the, that field isn't there. If I tick yes, it pops up. Okay, so that's why I was talking about keeping things simple so people only give you what they need to for the interaction to take place. So that's just a, a simple um, idea of conditional logic in that instance. This is a, uh, yeah, we've added something in because they've answered a question rather than taking something away. <coughs> oh, excuse me, getting a bit croaky. 
Um, the other controls that you've got with this, um, and like so many of these things, you can, you, there's a little eye there, you can preview it as you're going along, but I just happen to know we have it embedded in a website, so I can go straight there and look at that. Um, your bits for what's going to happen when they filled in the form are at the bottom of the page. Okay, so it's a, it's a bit confusing. You have to scroll all the way down when you've built it. Um, so you've got options here. You can send them to um, another web page. We put up a thank you message, so that actually pops up on the page. And as you can see, it says um, you can submit another response. So um, if they're looking for uh, perhaps to have their eyebrows done and then they want to make um, an inquiry on behalf of somebody else, for instance, or to see if there's any other treatments that you provide and can they go together or, or whatever, you know, that this is their chance to do that. Um, and in this instance, we can actually say and also show them a blank form after five seconds. Okay, so we are on a paid plan with this. Um, and the only downside, if, if it can be considered this, is that this will only send the email notification to us to one email address. Okay, so we can't use this on the plan we're on to send it to somebody else. So I couldn't get somebody to fill this in and give the details to Richard. I would have to be, upgrade my plan essentially to, to achieve that. So yeah. hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Oh, I'm getting bings and bongs. What's going on? Somebody else joining us. Um, okay, so <coughs> I said about um, keeping things simple for people. So you'll notice that we use a lot of, um, just pick one of these. Yeah, so they don't have to write anything. Let me show you it actually on the web page, maybe easier. Yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, so keep it simple for people. Um, yes or no answers if you can. Um, and if I, if actually what I'll quickly do what happens if you don't if you don't complete a um, box right so it will tell you that you've missed a field out okay good um, Uh, not going to fill anything else in. Hopefully, I can submit that. Okay, so in this particular instance, our oh, five seconds are now possibly up. Yeah, so because it's a long form, as you could see, when that message popped up, it's putting it in the middle of the whole form. And if you can see, the form is a scrollable event on the page. Yeah, so that in this instance, and I'm just going to make a note of that, it may be better to send that to a thank you page because somebody could quite possibly have missed that and then not realised that their form has actually been submitted and been received. They, they will get an email, but it's just a visual confirmation that what you did when you hit that button actually had some effect, yeah? Yeah, of course, yeah. Mm. Um. So I'll quickly run through a gauge bait. I can't remember how long it takes to come through, so I'll keep popping back. Or well, in fact, it may not come through. I just realized I created a copy of the form to demonstrate it to you. So I may go back and have a look at it in a bit. Okay, so um, engage bay, um, which I said is, is a CRM. Um, so as you can see, we've got all our, we've got the facility to have our contacts in here um, <clears throat> and we can assign them to lists. <coughs> so does anybody use a CRM in their business? No, don't. Okay, so um, I suppose, well, certainly Richard and James, I should imagine that, that there is no 
dialogue so to speak before the sale happens if somebody wants their eyebrows done for instance they're going to say can you do them you'll say yes it's this much and they'll either say yes please when I can I come in so there is no pipeline of estimates and proposals going backwards and forwards and things like that <clears throat> so it's probably not relevant from that point of view um, I don't know Kelly if this would be relevant to you I suspect not well yeah we we have um, a CRM Again, okay. members, donors. Right, okay. So you clients we're looking after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so this may be of benefit from that point of view. Um, so we have the facility to actually create forms. Uh, let's see if I can back. So we've got uh, several forms that we've created. <clears throat> so how many times has it actually appeared is the impressions and how many people have filled it in. So it gives you a bit of um, analytics data from that point of view. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. Um, so from that point of view, is your form actually working? So th that could be useful there, or do I need to go and rethink my form? Yeah, because if I'm getting, um, if I would say, well, this one here, for example, and I suspect that this one's, not up any longer. Uh, your conversions are 0.5, uh, a half of 1%, I think is the correct way to say that. Um, so that's not particularly good, um, depending on the context that it's in. So in this instance, this is exhibitors, so it's people that are working with us anyway. So there tends to be a lot of interaction on Facebook and things like that. So you may say, well, looking at that, Nobody wants a newsletter, I'll take it off the website. Or I'll take that one off the website, just as a for instance, it's not working. Um, but yeah. as you can see, the, the one at the top, we, there's over 10%. That's a pretty good conversion rate. In fact, I'd say anything over 2.5 is not bad. Yeah. Um, depending on, obviously, the, the business that you're in and, and what the website is designed to do. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's me. Um, Sorry, I'm just going to see if I can't arrange a water. Okay, so um, on this one, this actually um, shows you how you're constructing the form as you go. So it is a bit more visual in that respect. Um, and you can see I've got the, the bits at the top, so I can change the text, change the colors, um, I can change the fields. Now this, um, the fields here work on the fields that you've set in your CRM. So you have to go into your CRM and set a field to be able to, um, <clears throat> or it's the best way to do it, is to set your field and then pull it into here. You can create new ones, which will add it in. Um, but especially if you're looking to segregate a list, you, you may be better off looking at how, why you created the, the list in that particular way in the first place before you start just chucking in extra fields. Um, so as I say, you get a view here of what it's going to look like. And again, you can see we, we're putting on the form tick boxes for people to just say, pick this one, pick that one, whatever, rather than, thank you. Sorry, I'll refreshment break. So yeah, make it make it as simple as possible for people to fill in, um, especially if you know a lot of your visitors are using mobiles. Yeah, because um, I don't know about you, but I really struggle to type on some of these forms on a mobile device. So if there is no need to type, if I can just pick things, life becomes a lot easier. <coughs> Um, yeah, so, and you can, as you can possibly appreciate, all of these tick boxes go back to um, a box in the, or a method of uh, segregating the data in the CRM. So, um, well, let's stick with cosmetics. There's a couple of boxes there for cosmetics. So, um, 
if you're looking for somebody that does retail of cosmetics, when you're searching in your CRM, you'll be able to do that because they filled in the fields here. So you can literally sort of hone right down. Um, and if people are only available on Mondays and Tuesdays, it may be that that's been included in there. So if all of a sudden something that you're doing, so say you're having an event, Kelly, for instance, I don't know if you ever do, but if you've suddenly got a space for two people of this specific categories, you can quickly segregate your list, email out to them and say, we've got two, we've got two spaces on Tuesday for whatever come along. So it's a, it's a great way from that point of view, this tool is really quite powerful for um, you to reach out and touch base with your clients and customers again, um, which is client relationship manager. It sort of makes sense that that's what it's designed to do. Oh, does uh, it come with like so does it come with like a query tool then so you can query that database um yes so you actually create all of these fields yourself so i mean it's completely up to you and then when you put somebody in so like we had a phone conversation let's just say and i thought i'll enter james into my crm so i would actually physically enter you in and then i would have to go through and pick all of these on the form that i fill in as the owner Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's in a different view to what you can see there, but it's mm -hmm. all it's all there. So I've decided that that's the categories I want. So, uh, so each one of these ones you've got here, are they all fields are they, or columns? Uh, no, it doesn't work in columns like the other thing. And um, because of uh, data protection, I can't show you a record. No. Okay. Okay. Um, so essentially some of these like um, names etc would be a field on your form that you would see as the, yeah. as the owner um, and then yeah. some of these boxes etc might be in a drop down so you would say uh, uh, I can't, can't remember what the, how, the, how it's been built now off the top of my head um, so let's just say that for storm chasers for storm chasers digital is did these people come from the WordPress Academy that are making this request? So we would tick that box and say, okay, so the WordPress Academy is actually giving us some value, for example. Um, yeah. So you may say on, um, if your wife goes to a show, she may do specific flyers for that show and then put a code on them and she can have a code on the form, fill out this code so that you can track what, what marketing has been working in that respect. Okay. Yeah. Does yeah, that good. does that help you? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't need to show you on a website because that's essentially as it as it looks that on the side there. So you, as I said, you actually get a, ver a visual um, idea as you're building it. Um, and again, and you can you can drag these fields sorry, around, you, and you can sort of pin that to any website you want um any website you you've got access to so you can go into your yeah. settings here yeah. mm -hmm. um so again you can show success messages you can redirect it um you've got your setting on the side here to embed the form so you literally take that bit of code there just click the copy yeah. button right. and then you would paste that into a wordpress page brilliant good okay yeah. so um Let's just, oops, let's just do something right. That would be a start, wouldn't it? So did I click the button? I can't remember. So yeah, literally copy that to your clipboard. Um, no, let's just pick a page at random. That was a bad move. I should have started a new page. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys use the text editor or if you're using um, block builders or uh, page builders or whatever. Yeah, I, do. Yeah, I just use this. Is it called the, the classic view? Yeah. Yeah. We, we take, yeah. Okay. Use well, we, we actually use um, a page builder, um, which is just another way of building things. Um, where you get to see what it looks like before you actually complete it. So I can now just um, 
save that in here. I might have had to use an HTML block actually rather than, well, that's the gist of it. It would be nice if it actually worked, but it's taking a while to actually do anything at the moment. Yeah, sure. Um, and I think, I suspect we've got some cash, caching issues right now, um, which is not the best, but there you go. Okay, I'll come back to that in a minute. Let me just um, take you through gravity forms. Um, and, and all these are plugins, aren't they? All these, oh. these, these three things are plugins. No, no. So Engage Bay and Airtable are two separate yep. platforms. Okay. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Um, but you have the facility with both of them to uh, embed the forms onto your website. Okay, and, yeah. and you can also um, just send them out as a URL. So, okay. so for a lot of them, you can literally just copy the URL and then send it out in an email and somebody can go and fill it out that way. So um, I suppose from that point of view, these things are a benefit as you don't need a website to deploy them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, you could possibly put the form out as a URL onto your Google My Business page, for example. And people could follow that link and then connect with you in that respect. Um, so, for example, if I go back to here, if I can remember how to do it, because I only ever embed them myself, so we can share the form, yeah. So we can literally just send out that link yeah. And, then, and then people could fill out the form via Facebook or Twitter or whatever medium we'd chosen to, to use. Okay. So forms on your site, so we use Gravity Forms. Um, <laughs> and this is a drag and drop builder. And um, like so many of them, you can preview your forms literally off the page so you can see if what you're doing is, is going to look pretty when you're finished or as pretty as you can make it anyway. Um, and as I said, like on here, this one, for example, it's step one of five, there's, there's five pages to fill out. Okay. So at first you may think that's a bit daunting, but as you can see, we, we've kept the pages short. Um, and it is for people to actually sort of say, oh, I've got a website project and I'd like you to give me a proposal for this. So as you can appreciate, we do actually need some information there mm. so that we can get it going. Um, but if you're looking in, in the back here, um, your forms, as it says here, check boxes. So here's all the fields you can use on the one side and you can literally just drag them over and say, I'll have that in there. Um, and, and here's a good tip. You, you want this to be as easy for them to give you the information, but you want to make sure that the information is relevant, yeah? So most of these things have a description. Okay, so whether, the, and you've probably come across them online as you're filling out forms, but if you want somebody to give you, for example, if we want a URL from somebody, if they, if they want us to look at a website they've already got, tell them how you want that URL. So do you want it to be HTTPS forward slash forward slash, or do you just want your website.com? Yeah, so it's, also stops them being frustrated if the form won't submit. Okay, because mm -hmm. because so many of these forms it says required field and it's just a tiny little asterisk or something which is easy for people to miss. And if if they get something wrong and it just won't submit the form, people you'll end up losing people. So mm -hmm. tell them what it is that you want because um, because then the, the person that's wrong is them, not you if that makes sense, you know, they'll end up, oh, why didn't I read that? Rather than say, yeah. well, I don't, I don't want to work with these people because I can't fill out their form. <laughs> so, um, so look at it from a, uh, if you were giving it to a 12 year old, yeah, this is the information on it. Actually, that's probably a bad analogy where technology is concerned because they'd probably get it right first time. But, 
<laughs> but you know what I mean? Make it so simple that anybody can do it, yeah? Um, so, as you can see, we have quite a bit of control on each individual box here that we can do. So, um, we've made this as a tick box, but as you can see, we can add more in. So, should, should you ever want to have a no, I don't understand button, you can include that. Um, but obviously, if you're saying, um, is morning better or afternoon, tick boxes, you can just keep adding them in. And if it's going to be morning, did you want it to be before 10 a.m. or after 11? You know, you can, if you sort of think about it in the, uh, the context of your business and what it is you do, you could quite quickly see how you can make this really simple for people. And also it makes it simple for you, because especially if you're saying to somebody, what's the best time to call you? If you can give them as many options as possible, you can plan your day so much easier. Um, we don't need that feel, I'll take it out again. And you can see on here that it's saying this is where my page breaks are, okay? So I add these in, I say, stop it here, make this page two. So I can decide which forms go, which bits of the form go where and how do people see it, etc. cetera. Um, and like the other one, as I said, you, oh, sorry, you've got um, the facility to have um, conditional logic here as well. Yeah, and so much more. Um, and and I, we haven't really got the time to run into quite a lot of this. So it can start filling fields out dynamically and things like that. And, and I won't go into that because um, it's just going to, that would be a lesson of its own, actually. I think I might, might write that down, do a lesson on that. Um, Now, the, the only um, real sort of difference, I suppose, with this one that you perhaps need to consider as far as um, we were talking earlier about GDPR and things like that, is that somebody has submitted a form onto this website, okay? And we can go and have a look here at the entries that we've got for this form. So we can see the people that have filled in this form or we can look at the entries down the side here and then select the form, okay? If we want to put these entries somewhere else, we need to be very conscious of our legal requirements. Okay, so um, you were talking about, did you say, uh, Kelly, was it applied and explicit consent? Uh, implied and explicit, yeah. Implied, yeah. Um, so, just think about that. If, if you want to put somebody into MailChimp to send them emails now, you haven't asked for permission for that. Okay, so um, straight away you're in GDPR, I think you'd be in trouble. And I think you certainly would be for, or potentially you could be for the uh, Spam Act as well. Okay, so just something to think about. If, if you do want to put have things that serve a double purpose think about how it's going to work and, and the legal requirements around that to make sure that you're not going to um, break the rules so uh, a good one is um, a lot of e-commerce woocommerce richard a lot of woocommerce websites integrate themselves with um, things like mailchimp and they will then have a tick box on the checkout where they fill out their details for the product that says yes, add me to your newsletter. Okay. Yeah, I, I've noticed a lot of them now are, um, are still not compliant at all. They just um, add you anyway. Yeah. Right. And the worst ones are the big companies. Oh yeah, yeah. That Southern Water. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, uh, namely because it's the way they've done it for years, more often than not. Mm -hmm. But it's just something uh, that you need to, so essentially what you're going to do is stop people complaining now rather yeah. than dealing with the complaints when they happen. Okay. So, um, for example, over here with, as far as the cookie law is concerned, um, I'm sure you're aware that you need to have a banner that says no. you use cookies and people need to accept them, um, from that point of view, but the information commissioner's office will only act at the moment on, uh, complaints 
okay so if you don't have that you may be okay so long as you don't do anything to upset me no. but it's it's best to be prepared rather than have to deal with compliance if that makes sense it's it's best yeah, to have a smooth road between you and, and especially as a lot of these forms are going to be for potential customers rather than actual customers if that makes sense you're trying to influence these people to to having an interaction with you so make their path as we as we started out saying as smooth as possible okay um, one of the advantages you get here so confirmations this is where you say yeah we've got your information and they get a message oh i've got to leave the page that's because i've been playing about with the form um like the others you can um have them go to a different url you can have a message that pops up on so in this instance we've got a text message that comes up on the page or we can send them to a page so it's another page in our website so you create the page first and then you just go and select it um, so for an analytics point of view i suggest sending them to a thank you page okay because if your analytics measures people that hit the thank you page you know that they completed the action yeah and it it's quite a simple um, method of setting up goals in google analytics um, there are other ways to do it but just as a as a lay person who's using analytics to measure what happens if you want to set up a goal you can set up a goal that says tell me when somebody gets to this page excuse me um, and you can write, redirect them so you could actually send them to a completely different website or you could send them to a Facebook group if that would be of benefit for them once they've completed the form would it be useful to them to join a Facebook group or, or to go and like your page you could put that in your message please go and like our page or something yeah um, and you have the option here to send the data that they filled in to where they're going yeah so i i could say um i want to put there thank you for giving us your your phone and your email address and it tells you the bits and pieces you need to put in so you put that in there um the other good thing is that with this one is that you can notify multiple people yeah so you can say this is a, an email notification that i'm going to send out when the form is completed and now you can start saying okay that's who it's i can say who it's from what it was all the fields from the form are going to be filled in but i'm going to have a copy of this and i'm going to send a copy to joe because he's the one that's going to go and deal with it um, so maybe if you're using uh, a fulfillment company Richard at all at any point or a different wholesaler it may be that you have a form where somebody says please can you put in uh, a card on my order and this is this is the information I want it to say and you say right I want that and I want Joe to get that and then in two days time I should get a notification from Joe saying it's gone and if, it, if I don't I know that I should have done so I can follow up with Joe for instance yeah yeah so does that make sense to everybody mm -hmm. yeah so hopefully um i've given you some ideas of how you could potentially use um as i said forms beyond contact forms within your business yeah um let's say for people booking appointments they will work for that um, there are other methods if you're going to start looking down that road james for example um, th there's actually plugins that will do bookings from that point of view oh yeah. okay um, so for example um, let's say uh, does your wife employ anybody else no no only me uh, <laughs> uh, but okay, so, so, so let's say she takes somebody else on for yeah. example um you, you the plugins will give you the opportunity to say book an appointment with me or with richard 
or okay, it right. may say, I want a treatment that's going to be an hour long and I don't care who it's with. And it will say, okay, well, there, you book the treatment, pick that option, an hour, and then it will say, well, Richard's got an hour on Friday morning or Mark can do Thursday afternoon. Who do you want? Sure. Oh, I see. That's quite yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and there's also third party um, bits of software, uh, Calendly off the top of my head, where you can set that up where people can book a slot for, um, let's say, for a 15 minute phone conversation. Okay. Um, yeah. And that one has an advantage in as far as they can change the time, providing that there is an available slot when they want to change. So, so if they put, pick yeah, yeah. tomorrow morning at nine and then oh, I've got to take Auntie Doris to the doctors, I'll go the following morning, they can actually change it themselves rather than emails going backwards and forwards saying, can I change my appointment? It, yeah, that's right. You can actually choose a different slot and you can set those slots up. So they could be 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 40 or whatever. And you can have multiple slots. So do you want a 15 minute conversation or do you want an hour's treatment? That, you know, the, the things are endless. And like um, a couple of the forms that we've looked at this evening, you would then embed that onto your website. Quite sure. Okay, sounds good. So hopefully, guys, you've got some information there that is useful and helpful. Um, or at least giving you some ideas of how you can get your website visitors to interact with you in a rather than just give us your name, email address, and a subject, um, yeah. So that you can start to quickly prioritise what you need to respond to, and and it makes them feel better about it. If if they're saying to you, um, nobody just says, "Can I have a haircut?" But they want to know that they've got you've got the time to give them a haircut, and that you care, and that which products you use. So, for example, if you're a hairdresser, you could say, "Do you want to use Weller shampoo, or do you want to use another brand?" Do you see how you can make people's um, their whole journey so much smoother? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, has that given you any help there, Kelly? Absolutely, absolutely. Excellent. And, and Sol, you joined us late. Well, you, I'd say we'll we'll let you know when the recording's available anyway, so you guys can grab that as well. But I'd better do some editing first because I'm not sure if I did any swearing. But if I did, I'd better take it out. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, Kelly, I'm sure you've probably got a busy afternoon ahead of you now. Or are you still in lockdown? Well, yeah, we're we're still on lockdown. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm working from home and enjoying it, so it's okay. <laughs> Will they ever get you back? That's the question. <laughs> we'll, we'll negotiate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully we'll see you again next month.